Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about getting input from users in Ruby. This is going to be awesome. Basically, going to allow a user to input information into our programs. We're going to store whatever they input into a variable, and then we're going to print out that variable along with a message that basically just says hi to whoever entered the information. So in order to get information from the user, we're actually going to have to do one thing. And if you've been following along with this course, we've been using this Atom Runner program in order to run our Ruby files. And this is a really awesome, convenient way in order to just run a Ruby file. But here's the problem. If we want to get input from a user inside of our Ruby programs, we actually can't use this little Atom Runner plugin to do it we're going to have to use something called the terminal or the command prompt. Now, if you're on Windows, this is a program called the command prompt. If you're on Mac, it's called the terminal. Basically, it's an environment where we can interact with our computer using text. And in order to interact with the computer and input information into our Ruby programs, we're going to have to use the terminal. So the first thing I want to do is just show you guys how to set that up, and then we'll look at getting input from the user. So. This is going to be instructions for doing this inside of Atom. Over here, I'm just going to go over to the preferences inside Atom or the settings. And down here, I'm just going to click this install tab. And I want to search for a package. We're looking for a package which is called platformio IDE terminal. So search for this. And you'll see it shows up over here. And I actually already have it installed. But you want to install this platformio IDE terminal. Basically, what this is going to allow us to do is use a terminal or a command prompt if you're on Windows straight from inside Atom. So install that, and now we're just going to go back over here. Um, you might need to restart your Atom program in order to use it, but eventually what you should get is a little plus sign. You'll see there's this plus sign down here at the bottom left, and when I hover over it, it says New Terminal. So once you have this installed, you want to go ahead and click that, and a little terminal window should pop up down here. You'll notice mine is just black with white text. So this is where we can run our Ruby program in order to get input from a user. And this is also another way that you can run your Ruby programs. So down here, as long as you have your Ruby file open inside of Atom, so as long as this file is open, when you open up Platformio IDE terminal into a new terminal, it should automatically open up to the location where your Ruby file is. Now, you know, I'm not going to get too into like using the terminal in this tutorial, but essentially you can navigate through the different folders and the different files inside of your computer using the terminal or the command prompt. Um, so as long as you have your Ruby file open, like I have this draft.ruby file open, this should automatically open to the correct directory. So you won't have to worry about that. So once we're here, I just want to type in Ruby. And then I want to type in the name of the file that I want to run. So in my case, it's just draft.rb. And what this is going to do is it's going to run the file for us. So now when I click enter, it's going to run the file and you know it'll basically stop. We don't have any code up here. So if I was to print out like, hello, now when I run this again, I can just type it in and click enter and you'll see that we get the program running. So that's basically how we can run a Ruby program from inside of our command line or inside of our terminal. So we're going to have to do this in order to get input from the user, just so you guys know. All right, so let's talk about how we can get input from the user. Basically, I'm going to allow the user to input a piece of information. We're going to store that piece of information inside of a variable, and we're going to print it out onto the screen. So first thing I want to do is actually just type out a prompt. So I want to tell the user what I want them to enter. So I can just say puts. And I'm just going to say, enter your name. And now once we've prompted them to enter some information, I can use a special command in Ruby called gets. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow the user to enter a piece of information into our program. So it's basically going to stop the execution of the program and wait for the user to enter something. And what I want to do is I want to store whatever the user enters inside of a variable. So I'm actually going to create a variable called name, and I'm going to set it equal to gets. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to tell Ruby to take whatever the user inputs into the program and store it inside of this name variable. So the last thing I want to do is come down here. I'm just going to say puts, and I'm going to print out some text. So I'm going to say hello 
plus name. So basically I'm printing out hello to whoever entered in information into the program. So I'm gonna save this. Now I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna run this program. So you'll notice um, if you click the up arrow on your arrow keys on your keyboard, it'll actually just insert the last line that you entered. So I just click the up arrow here. And now when I click enter, you'll see that it says enter your name. So I'm gonna enter my name, it's gonna be Mike. And now when I click enter, and actually we're getting an error here, I, this should actually be puts down here, not put, that's my bad. So let's do this again. So I'm gonna enter my name, Mike, and now when I click enter, it's gonna say, hello, Mike. So it's basically just saying hi to me. So that's the basics of getting input from the user. You can use this gets in order to get specific information. Now I do wanna to talk to you guys about one more thing, which is basically something that happens in Ruby when we enter information. And let me sort of illustrate this. So down here I'm saying, hello, name. And after this, why don't we print something else out? So I'll say like, you are cool, All right? So I'm basically printing out, hello, name, you are cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this program and you guys will see what happens. So I'm running the program, I'm entering in my name, Mike. And now when I click enter, you'll notice that it prints out, hello, Mike, but then it prints out a new line and it says that other text. Basically what's happening here is when I click enter, Ruby is not only taking that as the text that we entered, but also as a new line. So whenever you click enter, it basically like is gonna insert a new line. So Ruby is essentially printing out Mike, then the new line character, and then all the text over here. In order to mitigate that, all I have to do is come over here and say name is equal to gets dot chomp and an open and close parentheses. And this is gonna get rid of that new line character that happens when we click enter. So now when I run my program, it's gonna be able to work correctly. So I'll say, enter your name, Mike. And now it just says, hello, Mike, you are cool. So now our program's working perfectly. So if you wanna keep that new line when the user clicks enter, you can go ahead and just not put dot chomp here. But in a lot of cases, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just put that in there. So that's the basics of getting input from a user. And if I wanted, I could get multiple pieces of information. So for example, I could say puts enter your name, and I'm actually just gonna copy this. And now we'll say like enter your age, and we'll do the same thing. I'll store it in a variable called age. So now we could actually come down here and we could print out like, hello, Mike, you are, and then we could just print out like the age. So now it'll just be printing out age. So now we can get two pieces of input from the user. So let's run our program and it says, enter your name, Mike. And let's say that I'm like 59. So now it's printing out, hello, Mike, you are 59. So we're getting, input from the user, we're getting two pieces of input from the user and we're printing them out onto the screen. So that's the basics of getting input. And in the next couple lessons, we're gonna talk about other ways that we can do this and basically ways we can make this work a little bit better. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.